the Barbarians will always have a place in the game. You know, it captures the pure motivations of, of players in the amateur era, where they play for the right reasons, they enjoy the camaraderie, real time constraints to build a team. Uh, so you've got to make an effort. Players have to get outside their comfort zone off the field just to engage. Uh, as you do in this game, you go through a life cycle in a week, and it, that Barbarian's concept is unique in sport, I believe let alone in, in rugby. Always amazing how a group of guys from all over the world could come together and, and play united, I suppose, um, and always perform in, a, in an awesome way, you know, play some exciting rugby. We do a lot of stuff off the field. When we come to that game day, it's, um, you know, we, we, we put our best foot forward. It's always been my dream for rugby. Even before I thought about playing international, I want to play Barbarians. So, yeah, for me, it's, it's, it's a massive honour and a privilege to be here. So I've just arrived in London. Um, it's the middle of the November test window and uh, just flew in this morning from Tokyo, so pretty excited. Heading in in a black cab from, uh, from Heathrow Airport into Mayfair uh, and about to meet all the, all the boys from the team. I'm not even too sure who's, who's in the mix yet, everyone there, but looking forward to getting there and uh, making some new mates and having a good time. For me, Barbarians, when I was, when I was a young fella, you know, I, I was, Obviously the All Blacks, you know, I knew the All Black, the Hucker and uh, the National Anthem. My dad taught that to me and um, at a very young age. Um, but the other thing he talk, we always talked about was the Barbarians and um, how they could get a group of guys from all over the world to come together and, and play against international teams and compete well, often, often beat them. Um, so when I got invited um, to play Barbarians, it was a great honour. It was something I wanted to achieve in my rugby career, to, to, to pull on the Barbarians jersey. So. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to do that in 2010, I think it was. And then again in, in uh, last year, 2016, uh, where I was able to captain, and, um, and then again this year. So I've been, I've been really lucky to be, to be invited three times now. When I heard the Barbarians were playing uh, the All Blacks, I, I thought it would be, uh, be amazing. So I was, had my fingers crossed, hoping for the call-up again this year. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, I was lucky. Lucky Robbie, uh, Robbie flick, flicked me a message and was able to do it. So, I mean, to stand up against the Hucker and um, yeah, play. I mean, I mean, some of the boys in the All Black team are my best mates, you know. Or, um, so it's going to be pretty cool coming up against them. And no doubt there'll be a few cheeky words on the bottom of a ruck here or there, but it's to be expected from a halfback, isn't it? Um, yeah, it'll, it'll be great. It'll be great fun. And like I say, we. The Barbarians can just go out there and play like they've got nothing to lose. You know, we will go out there and have, have a lot of fun and leave nothing out there. I'm sure the All Blacks will as well, so we should have a really good entertaining match. Here we are. This is where it all begins. Gathering the group is, is very difficult. Um, not surprisingly, when you look at the, the rugby calendar, uh, none of the competitions align. You know, there's a lot of demands on players, and now with the game being professional, they're, they're captured contractually. And um, you know, clubs like to protect their resource. Uh, international teams like to protect their resource. So it's getting harder and harder to get access to players. But those that we do approach all want to do it. To a man, want to do it. Over the last couple of years, we've actually created a little bit of a, a, a travelling group of players who are on the cusp of international but uh, haven't cracked it. There's a, a few a handful of caps and then you have the odd retiring player in that, in that mix. So you've got both ends of the spectrum. And that's, that's great. You know? From a public perspective, they get to see players that they know a lot of, but they also get to see the emergence of, of the next generation. And it's surprising when you give opportunities to young blokes, but with this jersey on, they respond to it. I never thought in my wildest dreams I'll, I'll be picked for Barbarians. For me, not even being an uh, international player, I'm 29 years old at the moment, so I'm pretty old being picked as a non-cap player. But um, yeah, I honestly never thought I'll, I'll have the opportunity to represent the Barbarians. Coming into a team and not knowing who's, who's going to be in it, um, kind of nerve-wracking, um, but 
you know, also exciting, uh, knowing they're going to create new bonds, uh, getting to know, know everyone um, as, as, as quickly as possible. Oh, there's definitely nervous energy when you when you arrive in here. Um, you know, because a lot of these guys you, you, you're now playing with, you've been playing against for years, and um, so you know when you get to c come in and, um, and sort of meet them, you know, firsthand, there's a little bit, there's a little bit of nervous energy. Um, but you know, we, we often uh, head out for, for dinner the first night and, and have a couple of quiet ones, and before you know it, we're all, we're all getting on pretty well, and um, those friendships have already started, which is pretty cool. These ties we're going to receive are players' ties. They're unique. Uh, they're only available, so don't don't swap them or sell them on eBay or do anything else with them. Um, it, once you've got this, this will mark you out for a barbarian as a barbarian forever. Now we're going to pull players out in. Um, we've never done this before. But it's alphabetical order in in accordance uh, by first name. We just got back from Australia. They don't seem to do set second names there, so, so it's all first names. So, first of all, Adrian Strauss. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. And the captain, Andy Ellis. Finally, Willie Britz. As we receive our ties, they just give a bit of history about the tie and, and the team and, and the whole organisation. And once I got my tie, it's just, you, it, it's so real now. You, you're part of it. You're part of that history. And um, no one can take that away from you. It's, it's just an amazing feeling. The Barbarians are an iconic name and brand and we have to uphold the usual core values that any uh, club or international team would want to uphold and those include discipline, teamwork, leadership, sportsmanship and enjoyment. The Barbarians Club was formed in 1890 uh, it was the vision of W.P. Cartmail, who had a history of rugby with Cambridge University and Blackheath, and he organised touring parties in true barbarian style to the north of England, where they invaded and played matches against various clubs. The touring aspect of barbarians rugby was a very new concept and it's now become a creed, of course. But at that time, the intention was to have a lot of fun. They were all amateurs, of course. And even to this day, one of the core values of most international teams is enjoyment. And they wanted, through friendships forged in barbarian rugby, to enjoy rugby and to expand it. The Barbarians have never had a clubhouse or a ground or a subscription for that matter. So playing uh, away from home and bonding as a team, uh, which is one of the great challenges of the Barbarians, was what those players enjoyed. The black and white um, has been there since 1890. Black and white jersey with a motif on the left breast, dark knickerbockers and dark stockings was the original the original garb of the barbarians. Certainly by the end of the Second World War, late 1940s, it was established that players would wear their club socks when they represented the barbarians. And you'll find to this day that uh, they all do that. All the players um, wear their club socks, and some of them wear odd socks because they want two clubs to be represented. The first real international match was against Australia in 1948 and since then uh, there's been a, a steady stream of international matches uh, with countries all around the world and um, our objective is to uh, is to encourage young people to play rugby uh, not just from the established rugby nations but also from those nations that are just starting to play rugby and are trying to develop it. I think we seem to forget in this day and age that this game, especially in the amateur era, was all about enjoyment. It was simply about having fun. 
And it's always been spiced with humour and, and obviously good-humoured misbehaviour and that has been part of the bonding of the Barbarians team. The Barbarians encourage the players uh, to express their own individual talents but also present to them the challenge of playing as a team. The All Blacks have been, over the last 50 years or so, uh, the number one team in the world. And to play the All Blacks at the moment, uh, when they're back-to-back -back world champions, with a scratch side that has limited training opportunities, is a real challenge for our boys. To get the boys to actually meet each other for the first time and to bond, and then to set one defence strategy in a couple of training sessions, and to hold your own in the set pieces in the match, is an enormous challenge for any Barbarian side. But that is part of the attraction of wanting to play for the Barbarians. Tuesday we have our head and shoulder shots uh, before the first team meeting. And then when the meeting kicks into gear, it's uh, just all about trying to simplify things as much as we can. You know, we only have three training runs together. Um, and a lot of the guys, uh, we'll play a very similar sort of structural style, so Robbie just sets that out um, very quickly. The key is to start with the playing group because they've all come from different campaigns, different programs, different backgrounds, different skill sets, um, different attitudes. So we've got to start with them and, and bring them together first and foremost, and, that, and that's uh, you know something that's special to Barbarians Rugby, the social side of the game. So. The key is to actually engage first, connect, and then bring that to the training field, which we don't spend long on the training field, because we want we want the Barbarians to be a point of difference from, from their normal routine. Um, and the, the, the routine of a, of a rugby campaign can be challenging. So we, when they come in here, we want to maximise their time, so be as efficient as possible in, in bringing them together, giving them some things to hang their hat on so that they can combine effectively and, and get the opportunity to do the things that they enjoy, get to do the things that they're good at. And we want it to be fun. So, you know, we try and do it a different way. OK, shape. Very simple. Some of you have seen it. So attack shape, off the edge. Bricks and mortars. 33. Two groups of three tight forwards. Lucy's come join the finishers. So off nine, sequence of arrival, one, two, three. Hit the first receiver, plus option, cut option. So hit the first receiver, plus option, <coughs> tip on, or the cut to number three. We always want this bloke available. We always want these blokes, bodies in motion, power on, okay? Everyone bodies in motion, power on. Step onto the ball, step, catch, look, you're not in the hole, you're giving it to someone who's got momentum, who can fight on the game line. End of mine, shoulders through. That'll be enough. That'll get us, get us rolling. Option out the back, 10. Direct, 10. So if 10 wants it, he calls 10. Second receiver wants it up, 10, he calls 10 as well. Or, we can hit first receiver, he sees width of opportunity, he calls gun out the back. We get started on the semblance of a structure, first and foremost, so that we've got an idea of locations. The worst thing for a player in the game is to be stressed about whether he's in the right place, right part of the ground, because we don't want them worried about that sort of detail. We just want them moving and offering and, and finding ways into the game. It also helps with communications. If they'll have a start of an understanding of the role play, then they can actually communicate proactively and, and we start to get bodies in motion. The thing about Barbarian style of rugby is definitely having a go. You know, um, we want to play an exciting brand of rugby that, that, that the public wants to watch. Throughout the years, they've, they've played an expansive game of rugby, just attacking, attack, attack. So it's always just about having fun and, and still executing what we're doing, but um, yeah, just, just playing some footy that the, the world wants to watch. Make no mistake, we're competitive, and there's guys in the Barbers that are, that are striving for international caps themselves, you know, playing for their countries. So there's absolutely, there's, there's massive motivation there, and guys are doing their best to 
you know, to perform well. There's no doubt about that. All it is is that you, you run out without that pressure that you have often at your, at your club or when you're playing for your country. Barbers are great like that. Come in and, and play well, but you know, there's no pressure on your boys. Go and, go and have fun. Go and show us what the game should be all about, and I think that's how you get the best out of it. What I've seen is that as, as a positive play, the, the fearless of the attack, um, nothing to lose mentality, and um, you know, attacking from everywhere, and, and I, you know, I love that right now. I'm a great believer when you watch a game of rugby, there's a couple of big indicators of uh, the side that's doing the best. And one is movement, and the other is connections. The most effective sides, if you watch them train, you'll see a lot of movement and you'll hear a lot of noise as players connect. They connect verbally, they connect with body language. So at the end of the session, we want to see some flow, some confidence. We, we don't want to see anxiety. We just want to see blokes touching the ball, seeking to touch the ball and, and being constructive in, in all their efforts. And on his cue, watch out, Bucky. So on his cue, you've got you're having a juice, Robbie. So as he walks into it, and he just does. The special plays are essentially a start point to the game. It's, most of the, the point of difference stuff actually happens after that. But it is fun and that's, it's stimulating for the group to be able to design something that no one's ever seen before and to play a part in that. It's always good to have some trickery plays in, 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 you know, in the back pocket and um, always keeping the, the, the other team um, guessing. And um, obviously, you know, knowing you're coming against a barbarian side, there's always going to be some sort of trickery or, or special moves. So I'm pretty sure um, the New Zealand team will be expecting something. It's like trying to reinvent the wheel a little bit. Everyone's like, the barbarians, you've got to do something. So it's kept me awake for the last week, thinking, what, 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 what? And I went to the American football and I saw what they did. When a kicker kicks a goal, it's just a guy catches it and places it on its end. Now, for rugby, we very rarely kick off the floor anymore. We kick off a tee. But actually, in the rules being, the law is being checked that Andy's just going to be having a little drinks break. Robbie Dupree or Richie Mwanga are just going to be having a little juice two, three yards off the ball. And on the cue of the kicker, he just walks towards the ball and he just lifts it on its end. So it's like a snap in American football. Cross field, it's a variation on a cross field kick. Um, it could be an absolute disaster. But the joy with Robbie is we give it a go. You know what? The sun will still come up on Sunday morning and who will they blame? Me! We were given a bit of a challenge on Tuesday before team dinner, and uh, because it was Halloween, so we had to do a fancy dress. So you'd see all the boys um, just walk out of the hotel, scrambling around to find a fancy dress uh, shop. But once we finally rocked up to team meeting, the evening was quite, quite funny. Um, see some of the guys were had amazing costumes. Uh, I think probably the best were five guys rocking up as Power Rangers. I don't know who it was, but it was good. Batman was pretty good. Um, he was, he was, I didn't think he breathed a lot, but the mask was really tight, but uh, he looked very good. He had a lot of effort into it. I'll probably see a few photos afterwards, but um, not for the books. I think it's very important um, for, for boys just to get involved in, say, like a fancy dress or, or something like that, just to get out of, out of your comfort zone. Just enjoy, enjoy it with the boys. It's, it's always a, a good challenge getting a suit or, or going out somewhere and doing something. So uh, for you to, to just get out of your comfort zone a bit and, and having a crack, having a laugh, everyone looks really terrible. So it's not as if someone's going to judge you or something like that. And, and that just helps the team grow a little bit more. Like I said, we only got a short week to turn around so, and, and become a little family. So I think little stuff like that just helps you get there quicker. On Wednesday, it'll be fairly light again. We'll do things like kickoff setups and um, where we want to kick off to them, and, and then just running through some more game scenario stuff so everyone just, I suppose, um, cements a lot of the learnings from the day before. You want the group to turn up in better shape in the morning, having had a bit of sleep. Uh, but obviously, all that 
social interaction is a big part of them actually arriving engaged with each other and, and ready to push on with, with your game. And yeah, we, we aspire to do more second time out, put together the, the plays with, with the phase play to have the players own it, start to, start to direct it because that's the way it has to be on the weekend. Um, so you want to hear less and less of the coach and more and more of the, the playing group. Day two out of a pitch and, and the boys are definitely a bit sharper. You know, I mean, it's that first day you're kind of just setting everything out and, um, and it's pretty basic stuff. But, and, then, and then today just sharpening slightly and everyone's kind of getting those things, the cogs ticking in their head to, to remember. So, no, it's all going well. Getting a line out sorted for a week like this, when it's uh, it's got to be quality and uh, you don't have much time, it's pretty tough. You know, it's uh, a lot of work to jam into a week. A couple of us that play together, it's it's kind of stuff that we've done before and the coaches have coached before. Uh, but you know, everyone everyone understands line outs, even the South African boys. You know, it all comes together and everyone kind of is on the same page really. So people pick it up pretty quick. A couple of the specials for the line out are going to be stuff that you haven't seen ever before. <laughs> Some stuff that's pretty interesting. But, you know, you expect that with bar bars and that's what's bloody fun about it, you know. So the penguin move is going to be a special one. Um, I think everyone's just pretty much going to hop around like a penguin, uh, doing a bit of a, of a dummy move in the lineout and just setting up from there. So I think as um, Dom, uh, Dominic Bird and, and Luke uh, Whitelock went through the moves, they, they pretty much thought it's going to look like a few penguins. Mm -hmm and hopefully catch the, the team off guard and um, yeah, get the ball in, get it out, maybe score off it. So it's going to be quite special. Bringing uh, 23 blokes uh, together all, all across the world that hasn't really played together and um, expecting them to do well on the field. And I think it's, it's more of a thing of um, getting to know each other better, creating a strong bond of a little family going inside a week or two. And um, it just helps just enjoying the time together and getting to know one another. I think especially when the nerves calm down a bit, that really helps in a team environment and, and just makes it good mates on and off the field to, to play with. New Zealand was one of the early matches um, in the 1950s. That was our first match. Uh, and we have had a, a steady uh, tradition of playing New Zealand over the, the years since then. And whatever team the All Blacks put out, uh, they always have a very strong team. And as many coaches have said, uh, the second team of the All Blacks today is the first team of the All Blacks tomorrow. Anybody in New Zealand is special because New Zealand are the world champions twice over at the moment and they've always been probably the side to beat. Um, from the point of view of the Bavarians, we've had some great games over the years. Uh, I was very fortunate to play in that game in 73 where we sneaked a win um, and that was very special for all the players that actually played in that game. You know, when you look back at it, um, you know, it stands the test of time because the Barbarians play the game the same way now as we did 40, 50 years ago. What really captured my imagination was in 1973, remarkable try that started in one half, moved into the other and uh, then the Barbarians counter-attacked and ended, ended up scoring at the other end with, with uh, many transfers. It was just a fantastic stanza of rugby and a lot of people that witnessed it, you know, it just captured their imagination and for me it, it latched me onto rugby. My dad has always spoken about that game in 73 and, and he was there and did have the chance to to try and repeat that, to, to beat the All Blacks in the Barbarians jersey was a huge honour and it's something we managed to achieve and it's a hugely proud moment in my career um, and I'm sure it is for all those other lads as well to come together and have a week's prep, prep and beat you know, one of the best sides in the world. It was huge and I mean, it, it's my dad is probably his biggest regret in rugby actually, not actually going to the game at Twickenham in, uh, in 09. He couldn't make it for some reason and uh, he was devastated that we won because he missed it. <laughs> um, but I say, great moment, great week. Some amazing, amazing times with good rugby people. Coming up against New Zealand at the end of a, of a five week tour, you know, we sort of knew we had a sniff at um, possibly causing an upset. Um, 
I think for me to be able to go out there and know that you scored a hat-trick against the All Blacks was, was unbelievable. Um, a lot of it not my own doing. You know, the first one was, was Drew Mitchell, you know, pouncing off a ball at the back of the rack in the 22 and sort of having a clear run through the line. And the next one was from either Steve Donald or you know, Luke McAllister wayward pass that I sort of fumbled three or four times before actually grabbing hold of it on the intercept on our 40. And the last one was a bit of sheer Matt Gidow magic, you know, slicing between two players, you know, offloading to Mono Stein, who very generously you know, put me over in the corner. So a fantastic experience, you know, we were coached by Nick Mallet. Uh, it was it was really a great weekend. Like I think the, the tradition of the Barbarians, you know, what it what it means not only to rugby players that are part of it, but for fans coming out to watch, you know, the skill levels, um, you know, throwing the ball around from, from anywhere on the field is, is really special. And I think that this particular game was really special given that it was against the All Blacks and it hadn't happened since 73 and you know, we'd had that whole build up about you know, the tries and everything that happened in 73 and how awesome it was and to be able to go out there and create this new memory of, of beating the All Blacks in a Barbarians jersey was you know, something that will go down in history and, and something I'm, I'm really proud of, of being involved in. Well, once you get started in game, once it gets difficult, you need something to that's going to act as a cue uh, that, that binds a group that's common to, to everyone, and they can use to to tap back into, to refer back to. You know, if things start going against you, um, it just provides a way of reconnecting and, and keeping going, essentially. Um, but it has to come from them. You know, it's no good being given by the coaching staff because. When it gets difficult, they'll just say, well, that was, you know, that was our idea, it was silly anyway. So it's better to be their, their motivation and, and their catch cry. And no two campaigns, you know, no two barbarians weeks are the same. It's a source of a lot of humour as well, but you just gain a great insight into your people. Do we have any further offerings? Uh, my warmth are going to warm. So W stands for um, Recreate, A stands for attitude, and R stands for responsibility and respect. Oh, no. oh, 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 Asking the questions, but we want to ask you that questions and then we'll be interested in the weekend. Mm. Mm. Nice and still. Yeah. Ask the question, own the answer. Just spit one, yeah. <laughs> Just good, mate. Keep going. Maybe we're good night's sleep, that's me. <laughs> We bring in opposition uh, for two reasons. One is it's fantastic for them. You know, you, you're giving amateurs an opportunity to, to have a run with blokes that they've probably watched on TV. Uh, so that's a thrill for them. But it's also good for our blokes. It's, it earths our blokes. They come to understand that people are interested in what they, they do. And, and you've only got to see the joy on the face of the Maidenhead lads that we trained against today. You know, that, that was a big occasion for them. Most of them gave up work for a day just to have the opportunity to run against the Barbas. It also gives us a sense of timing. It's all very well training without opposition, but you get a bit of resistance and your areas of need for attention become more evident and you start to actually function better as a group. Well, you're better to experience that little bit of resistance on a Thursday, so you're better come the weekend. And we've done that and it's, it's worked well for us. So this came about uh, probably three, four weeks ago. Uh, Green's our coach down at Maids, uh, helps out with our backs mainly. Um, and he asked if a few of us could get together and, and come run against the bar bars. So yeah, obviously uh, pretty chuffed with that. So um, yeah, so about 18, 19 of us come up today and, and uh, yeah, ran against him. From a forward perspective, at line-out time, I thought we did pretty well. Uh, yeah, won quite a lot of our own ball, um, didn't nick any of theirs. Um, and then when we went to do the run-throughs, um, I mean, they were on a different level. It's just so quick, so quick. Um, 
I mean, yeah, they, they scored for fun out there, but real, real good to, to kind of see how, how, you know, how much faster their game is. I just finished 20 years with Cardiff RFC and Cardiff Blues, and a good friend of mine, Di Young, now head coach of Wasps, he was actually um, asked to coach Barbarians in 2007, and uh, they didn't have no medical staff, so he asked me if I'd come along, and knowing the history of the Barbarians, watching them all these years, well, before he finished the question, it was a yes. Thanks to Di Young, I've uh, been here uh, 10 years or so, and uh, really enjoyed it. I do a uh, sports massage, stretching, specific point work, things like that, and on the pitch, you know, just cover the first aid on the far side, and doing the kicking tee. I'm a Cardiff boy and a rugby man, and, uh, and it's been just a uh, real, real pleasure to come here all the time, and just to keep coming back. Me, I'm typical old school. Get in there, get stuck in, let's get them performing, which is what the players want. They just want to be on the park playing and doing the job they love. Myself and Tim, the physio, we've been together. We've worked together for a few, quite a few years in the Blues. And with Donald has been around for years and years and years, I think. And uh, we just hit it off on our first tour. We played um, Belgium away, and then we played Ireland in Gloucester and England at Twickenham. So we just get on really, really well. And I think. The boys appreciate that we just think about the players and get them out there on the, on the pitch. It's awesome, so yeah, just losing the other up. This is always good to just get your back loose for the running tomorrow, and hopefully we're going to do a lot of running, um, scoring brilliant tries. So Wayne said he's going to come and visit me in South Africa, so I'll be waiting on it. Give me a few places where to go in Cape Town and uh, near the, the Kruger National Park. No, that's awesome, eh? Friday is very much the player's day. The final opportunity for discussion around the game, around clarity, around the things we want to do, where we want to do them, so that they can really just play on the weekend. So it's very much driven by the captain. We essentially, as coaches, aren't involved at all, and we leave them to it. So they've had the experience of, of running the show before they're required to do it in game. Today, literally, we start at one end of the field and we just walk up and uh, a little bit of jogging, but just walk and say, what are we going to do at this line out? What are we going to do if we have a scrum here? What's our kick philosophy here? So it's just more a clarity session. Um, and make sure the boys, if, got, if there's any questions, then we can go over that as well. The boys are in an awesome place, you know. Um, everyone's really excited about being here. Um, you know, Adrian Strauss had some, had some words in the huddle just saying what an honour it is to be here with the guys he's with and getting to play against the All Blacks at Twickenham. 60 or 70,000 people, you know, so it's, it's good. It just brought it all back into, um, into perspective, probably, just how special this is. Okay, so this is a uh, an albino Burmese python. They don't come this colour in the wild usually because predators would spot them too easily and would pick them off. But quite often in uh, in captivity, you get these kind of recessive genes <laughs> that end up with the most ludicrous colours. And uh, would you like to try? Yeah. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? So cool. 
So a lot of people expect snakes to be kind of greasy or slimy to the touch, but they're not at all. They've got completely waterproof skin, so they, uh, they don't sweat, and it's kind of dry and silky and velvety. And an animal like this that's been kept in captivity just is no danger to humans at all. They just don't bite. You can see it's uh, completely it's calm. Will Greenwood and I are friends. We live in the same area. And we came up with the idea of, I guess, helping some of the guys get around their, their, their fear at the start of a game by facing some of their primal fears. Things like snakes, spiders, scorpions, crocodiles. And uh, oh, no, boys done good. <laughs> the biggest lads were the ones who ran away the fastest. <laughs> it's amazing that they could stand on a touchline and front up to the All Blacks, but you put a snake in front of them, and a few of them were genuinely shaking. <laughs> when you put the barbarian's jersey on, there is a feeling automatically, I think, that you want to play expansive rugby. And we just want you guys to express your talent. You're here because you're extremely talented. So feel free to express that talent in barbarian's form. Now, you know as well as I do that if you take risks, uh, the crowd want to see that, but take risks against the All Blacks and they don't work, they'll punish you. They're very good at that. If you don't win your set pieces, you'll be putting pressure on yourselves. So all I say to you is um, when the pressure is on, stay alive win your own set pieces, but stay alive when the pressure's on. Don't let them score. Defend with everything you've got. Stay alive. The final thing I'd say to you is, as I briefly mentioned, you're here because you're the best. We think you're the best. We think this is the best team that's available to beat the All Blacks. You actually have the chance tomorrow, because you're playing against the world champions, you have the chance tomorrow, if you win this match, to be the best team in the world. And I hope you take that opportunity up. But enjoy it. We want you to have fun, something that has been lost to a great, a great extent in the elite professional game. But have some fun. Enjoy your time with the Barbarians. And thanks for listening. We'll now distribute the shirts. The boss. And the Ellis. <laughs> Willie Ritz. <laughs> and Dylan Hunt. Hey, <laughs> okay, gents, thanks. That's it for now. And thanks to you all, and many thanks to the coaches too. And we'll stand up, and Robbie, many thanks to you. Do your best. Match day routine is, is no particular routine. It's sort of whatever I feel like doing. Um, I used to have that routine, but then it sort of play with my head. If I didn't do it, then I'm like, I didn't prepare well. I like to stay pretty chilled, yeah, especially in this environment. Um, There'll be music on the bus. There'll be music in the, the changing sheds before the game. So everyone, it's, it's a nice, chill kind of vibe. You know, when you're playing international or even, even club, you know, there's often no music on the bus. It's a little bit more serious. Um, yeah, um, so it's enjoyable. Game day, particularly this environment, is, is really enjoyable. I mean, individuals are all different, but... Um, it's great to have a, an afternoon match. Uh, the evening games are tough. You lose a day of your life, you never get back. <laughs> you don't get the opportunity to put much into it. So the boys enjoy playing earlier. Um, it means you've got to get going earlier. They get up, they, they eat. Depending on the time of kickoff, we'll, we'll gather and walk and talk. Bit of a discussion. Just connect and Depending where you're playing, so at Twickenham on the weekend, we'll travel a little bit closer. Uh, 
and relax a bit and uh, get our minds ready. The bodies are ready at that point, it's just getting the minds ready for what's coming. It's the 125th anniversary. Yeah, we've talked about that, and it's, that's a pretty special thing. I mean, the All Blacks are going to come out, you know, humming, no doubt about that. Um, so that's, that's all part of the challenge, and I, that probably helps. We've got a, quite a few New Zealand boys in here, and um, they'll be wanting to prove their worth as well. It's an amazing experience to, to firstly face the Hawker, um, playing against the world, um, world's best team, like I said, double world champions, and then. Um, it's going to be massive. I know it's, uh, well, it's the, the type of game you dream of um, since you were little, just playing against the best, because you can only rate yourself when you play against the best in the world. Playing in a, in, in a team that's got an amazing uh, bunch of players, a great group of guys, and um, yeah, they'll definitely support you on the field. But for me personally, it, it means a lot, and um, you'll definitely want to have a good game and have a good crack at them. We actually all want to win, and uh, we know that's possible. Well, you've got to compete. Um, you have to engage. You just, you're not going to succeed without creating pressure. So you've got to be prepared to, to ask questions of them, you know, carry the ball at them, force them to, to defend, force them to work. Um, and you've got to be alert to the, to the few opportunities that they'll present you. Um, they're relentless with the ball, so they'll be at you the whole time. You have to play 80 minutes because the moment you button off, they, they can turn the scoreboard over very quickly. Um, so it'll be a good, a good workout. You know? We'll just go out there. We'll, we'll, we'll give it everything we can. We'll leave nothing on the track. We want to have fun. We want to play good rugby. And if we do that, then that's our best chance of beating these boys. There's, um, there's a lot at stake. I can say we'll, get, we'll go out there and uh, we'll have fun, we'll play Barba's rugby, but mate, there's, there's a lot, of, lot, lot at stake as well. Ten seconds. <laughs> so good, huh, boys. That is what it's all about, eh? What it's all about. Playing the game we love. So good, we made from different countries. This is what it's all about. Smiles on our faces all day. We love what we do. We love what we do. Show the world, eh? Show the world what we're looking for. He's got the call and it's a really good call. Yeah. Yeah. Screaming to the feet to give him the ball. It was involved there, but it's an interception. Francis up for the ball. Yeah, he said. He told me he's yeah. top. Who else? Archie's going all right. Keep him going. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe 10? Yes. Maybe 15. See how he goes. 10, yep. Put 10 on my assist. Willie, mate, assist. He's gone. We'll run. Um, he can go. Yeah, right, mate. So, Stephen Lowe, too, is on fire, but yeah. Really? 
Mate, the boys are gonna. The boys are gonna. Hey, the yeah. last twenty, we're gonna. Just, yeah. The asses are gonna be over there. Yeah. Talking about. Get you guys the distance as far as I'm concerned. Yes. So mate, we could push Rob into twelve and slide Harold thirteen. Can he play there? Yeah, yeah, he's playing. Yeah, that's that's the best you want. Is it yeah. good twelve? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good decision, Harold, mate. Uh, and he's got to kick Robert. Robert. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's got yeah kick there's your out. answer. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Kind of off the base of the scum. Perinara to Naholo. He's got the ball inside. Right, it's in the shadow of the post, and they go for the tap. Flying wedge last week, of course, that's been outlawed. But they're trying something else here. There's Van Royen. He's out there trying to rip that ball away, but he can't. And Stay out, stay out, stay out. Looking for a third try. And tantalizingly, close enough to get it. This guy, this guy. Yeah, do seconds again, we'll just try and regenerate from all around. Yeah, we'll get tight on this. Then we can attack all three zones. Yeah, you said right. We've actually turned the ball over as if our first receiver's got it, so we've got no one in. He's just carrying the flop, hard on the ball. So let's get our ball carriers. Luke, I need you there. Steve, I need you. We bring your runners and the ball carriers, and everybody's just playing. Okay? We work less. Happy to break up the line speed, and then we go back to the line. So love the rain, rain and love it. Yeah. Round two, boys, round two. We'll change both props. Five minutes in. Wait, 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 wait. Taken by Bird. It's stolen by the Barbarians. And look at this. We've got all kinds of options here. Yes. Go back in. Go back in. Back to Smith eventually. Little juggle from Forster. And the Barbarians turning defense into attack in a flash. Quag is a champion. Kerbalo, it's another advantage, so a free play here, and Laumape clearing away. That is advantage over. Luke Whitelock is captain. Luke Whitelock. Sam Kane. Some appeals for a try, and they've got it, and New Zealand suddenly have the lead. Sense of impact and inevitability at the moment. Contestable restart, and then we hold the ball. Tell them to keep their eyes on them. Keep their eyes on them. Ah, news! 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 Kerbalo does use it to find Sopawanga, and he goes round on the loop from Marpe. And goes looping in a different way now. Tackled again, of course, by that man Smith. Kerbalo. This is going to land on Twickenham turf, and therefore could go straight to Nathan Harris. Just need to get our hands on the ball, mate. What do they say? What's that? Oh, we're giving the bank your all. This is third one. Yeah. Three tries off. High, not taking a high catch. Message from Razor to Richie. Be brave. And they're going close to that New Zealand line, and his Drummond. They need a score now. They really do. Through his performance, through his...
his actions, he's really said to uh, Steve Hansen, don't forget me. Show on. Yeah, I know they're going to go for it. Well, look at that. Kicked. Place kicked across the field. Little idea at the end for the Barbarians. And you know what? It could work. In fact, all over that try. Doesn't matter what it came from, doesn't matter how it came, they took the game away from us in a 10 minute period. And they rattled that scoreboard at a key moment. The key is to make sure you finish with a bit of pride. I think this game just shows what the Bobbian stand for. I think a bit of flair and just hard graft. And I think we've become really tight um, in this week. And I think it showed on the field. The boys didn't stop working. Uh, I mean, we scored in the last minute. That's a show that we kept on working for the full 80. It's been one of the best weeks of my life, rugby-wise. Um, just been able to, yeah, guys like this, just amazing. So, um, yeah, making good mates uh, on and off the field. So, um, it's been really good.